Once you've extracted your diode, this video is going to be about getting it out of its heat sink and into a module like this. This is a standard 12 by 30 millimeter module to fit a 5.6 millimeter diode. And that's most of the round diodes you'll find are going to be 5.6 millimeter. Some will be 3.8 millimeter, and um, the rest will be uh, flat diodes or the 12 pin diode, which are all but useless. And uh, it, you won't find them in uh, DVD burners or Blu ray drives, but there's also a 9 millimeter diode and uh, those are usually a little more powerful but the one we have here that we got out of our pioneer drive is a 5.6 millimeter and they were nice enough to leave a little space around the edge there and here I have the uh, uh, press out tool you can get these from Flame and Pyro. Uh, I'll give a link to that in the description. And before I get too far into it, I also want to show you this. This is another thing you got to wear when you're working with laser diodes. Stat ESD wrist strap. You can put it on your ankle too if you want both hands free. But I wear mine on the wrist. It's just easier for me. Uh, user preference and then we have our bench vise just a little bench vise you're gonna want one that has metal jaws some of the uh, pan vise have plastic jaws and those aren't as good They're, they kind of flex and give a little too much so first we're gonna try this press out tool and if we can't get it out with that we're going to go to the uh, more drastic options. Sometimes you, you can get a, a, a side cutter in there and cut that and then take some pliers and twist and split them apart that way. Get it out that way. Now before, before we try to pull this out, first we have to remove the, the solder in this remnants of this flex cable off of here so I'll do that and then we'll make an attempt to press this out with this press tool to remove this flex cable remnant here all you need to do is take your soldering iron and get a little ball of solder on the end and then put that over that solder and let it melt for a second and then pull that cable off with a pair of pliers. You don't want to use your fingers, it's going to be hot. So that's the uh, accepted method. If you have a solder sucker, you could also get in there and pull it out with that. Uh, if you have one of those, those are pretty nice. That's the other way. And you want to be pretty quick about it too because you don't want to heat this up too much because these diodes don't like heat they are heat sensitive so I'll do that and then we're gonna try and make an attempt to press this out with this press tool as you can see I've removed that flex cable remnant from there so now we're gonna make an attempt to press this out And this just fits in that space around that diode between the heat sink and the diode itself. Let's 
see if it goes crooked like I think it's gonna do which it probably will Yep, it's going crooked. But it is coming out. And it's almost out. I gotta get it over that last hump. They did put a little bit of glue around it too. I can't quite press it by hand yet. Sometimes when it gets almost all the way out, you can do the last little bit by hand. Ah! I think I got it. Yep, there it is. Now this is the tricky part when this is loose like this. Not to drop it. Okay. That worked. Surprised how easy that was. Usually it's much more difficult. Let's see if I can get in here focused. There it is. That's the diode itself. That's what it actually looks like. And it's and it looks like it's a long closed can. Those are a pretty good diode. Not as good as the long open can, but they aren't too bad. And there's the heat sink. And you just discard that. And we're going to be using this as our heat sink instead. Set that down for a second. Undo the back half. Sure there's no junk in there. It's not necessary to use heat sink compound in there either. Remove the lens. And the lens spring. And you got just your bare copper module piece here. Now take your diode and just stick it in there like that with the pins sticking out the back see like that and then now I don't have the uh, regular press tool for this all I have is this removal tool but it works just as good especially on these diodes that have been pressed already and you just take this this is the part where the the metal jaws come in because you want this to be perfectly straight or as close to perfectly straight as you can get it Get the wheel on the side of the arm that's turning the wheel. Make sure this is straight. Because if your press isn't straight, your diode isn't going to go in straight. And when they don't go in straight, they'll catch on the inside of the module. And because that copper is so soft it'll leave a dent in there and that reduces your thermal contact area and sometimes they just take a little bit of maneuvering to get just right and this this one here this particular diode actually has a raised area on the back where the pins are 
and it's making it extra difficult for me here. When you think you got it fairly straight, start slowly cranking it in, and if it looks like it's going to go crooked on you, stop and re-straighten it. And that looks pretty darn straight to me. Mm, it's not perfectly straight. It's not... Now this one's going to be a little tricky. This one is going to be a tricky one, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going in there crooked. Now, if you have the removal tool, the, the uh, extraction tool, now you can put that back in where the lens goes. And hopefully if it's not too crooked, you can press it back out again. Sometimes all you need to do is just put it on the bench and manually see it popped right out because it wasn't in there very far. Now let's make sure that our we haven't nicked anything too bad in here. looks pretty good. If you have a microscope, you take that and you inspect that window and make sure that there's no dust on there. This is the time to do it too when it's out like this. Because once it's in there, you won't be able to focus your microscope on it. But I'm looking at it right now and it looks pretty good to me. So, I'm just going to put it in there. And for the video, I don't want to take up any more time than I need to. And once it goes in, once it starts going in crooked, that mark that it leaves in the module will make it want to go in crooked again. So then you're at that point you're fighting against nature to try to get the thing to go in right. This one is being very difficult. I might have to stop this and restart when I get this lined up straight in here. It's just being very difficult. And it could even be my my uh, vice too because Sometimes your vice will get, you know, crooked. And this is a good Sears vice, so... You know, that's not the vice that's the problem. I think that's going in straight enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's starting to flex and bend a little bit, so I'm going to... Pull it out and take a look. Yeah, it's not going in straight. It doesn't want to go in straight for me here. For some reason. This really isn't the right tool for this. So, I really recommend that you buy the right tool. It'll save you a lot of headaches. And when it's all the way in, it'll actually be a little bit recessed in there. It's almost in. Right now, it's actually level with the back of the module. You want it slightly recessed in there. And this is this is a long diode, too, so it, it doesn't really have to be in all, all the way. But for the best thermal contact, you really want to get it in there till it bottoms out and a lot of times you can actually feel it when it bottoms out like that you'll feel it bottoming out and you'll know when to stop but if it's a little crooked and it's already going in with force you might not feel that when it bottoms out for you Uh, 
this is really I don't think I'm gonna go much more than that because this is not going in anymore I think I'm gonna call that good enough and this this diode may actually be slightly longer on the base of it here you don't want to you don't want to crank down real hard on this because again this is just copper so it's really soft and you can mess it up without trying too hard I think that's good enough for me for now anyway at least for testing and then put your lens back in there and your spring and for diodes below 500 milliamps you can use a polycarbonate or milliwatts you can use polycarbonate lens above that you generally want to use a glass lens and the next step now is to solder your driver onto there find your pin out and solder your driver on there <laughs> 